All right, I wanted to go ahead and just do a quick video today. Just looking at a, a new update from Radiotity, and I've also noticed this on a couple other locations on the web, where Zygu, or Shagu, is putting out a new amplifier, a new 100-watt amplifier, called the GPA-100. Now, one thing I noticed is... With this amplifier, it's not even in pre-order yet. It's just sign up to get notified. A um, couple other sites do have it in a pre-order status. Uh, the one I saw was in Europe. They had it for 599 euros. Um, so probably looking in the 650, closer to $700 range in U.S. dollars. So a couple things that I really wanted to go ahead and look at with this amplifier is I'm going to compare it to the other Zygu amplifier, which is the, the 125. That one is actually going to be something that's a little bit, uh, little bit interesting. Let me go ahead and pull that one up here real quick. We're going to go back into their site and right here. All right, so here's the XPA 125, 100 watts. Now, this isn't a small amplifier. It's not a not a small device, but it's not huge by any means. Um, it's a good pair up for the G90, for example. So with this device, five hundred and eighty dollars and a hundred watts output. Now, if we start looking at the overall coverage on this amplifier, it's 1.8 to 30 megahertz. And then it also covers 50 to 54. So we've got 160 through 10 plus 6 meters with the built-in tuner. Now, maximum power output on this device is 125 watts. And it does require some extra cabling to go ahead and make it work. Um, there's a an extra cable that will actually key the amplifier and also syncs between the amplifier and the radio that you're using it with. So this one is, has been out a couple years. Uh, there's a lot of information out there on it. One thing that I did want to just really mention is that this does have, as they say right here, built-in auto antenna tuner. So let's go back to the new, the GPA 100, which is right here. There is no mention in this listing that this amplifier has a built-in tuner. So I'm going to have a little bit of a hot take on this one. It, it doesn't have its own tuner built in. Why would it be more expensive when you're getting the same coverages that the previous amplifier had, minus the tuner? I know there are going to be some people out there that say, well, it's it's newer, it's it's this, it's that, it's, you know, all that. And it's there are some interesting things in there. So it does show where it has uh, compatibility with the G90, the 6100, the 6200 and the IC705. Well, so did the 125 with a built-in tuner. And when you factor in what the, the cost is looking like coming out of Europe, this is going to be more expensive than the one from Europe or the, one, the previous model, the 125. So where is the, the benefit so let's take a look around this. Here's your front panel. You've got all your, your band selects, your info, bypass, auto, which is going to be your auto band switching. It does not give any idea what these two are right here, ATT and BT. So we'll have to wait and see once the, the full specs come out, the full reviews come out. I know I won't be getting one because Radiotity doesn't, doesn't consider me a large enough creator to send anything to, which is fine. I understand their point. 
but at the same time, at being a small creator, I'm not going to run right out and buy one either. So, you know, I don't like doing this type of video because it is not a physical device in my hands. But I wanted to go ahead and put this out as just kind of a heads up. People haven't really said much about it. And I wanted to go ahead and make sure that, you know, those that do watch my channel have had a chance to see it. So let's take a look at a couple quick things here. Solid state linear amplifier. Of course, it's going to be solid state. It's, it's a newer amplifier. Now, it does say that it is capable of working with other lower power QRP radios. I wonder how it's going to integrate with some of the other devices that are out there. For example, the new Yesu radio that just came out uh, just recently. Not I shouldn't say just came out, but is recent. Um, some of the other QRP radios that are you know lower wattage that could benefit from an amplifier. I do like the fact that it does have the physical buttons for the different bands. Um, that is a, a nice feature for those that don't have the automatic band switching. So, for example, a Hermes, Hermes Light 2. Um, this would be great to go ahead and have as an option for that. Let's see, it does have built-in cooling, which is nice. Um, really, I'm not seeing a lot that's it's different other than the loss of the antenna tuner. So as we look down through here, 25 amps maximum draw on power. You've got 100 watts on anything below, 10 meters and below. And then on 6 meters, you're at 80 watts. So it does have a little bit of attenuation in the, in the 6 meter band. Is that a negative? Not really. Um, between 80, 80 watts and 10, or 80 watts and 100 watts, there's not going to be a lot of difference in an S unit reading. So you're not going to see it on the other end. I'm going to say this. Um, great for, for Jegu to go ahead and put out something new, put out you know a different, different form factor, um, make it a little more broad compatible with other radios, a uh, little bit more control aspect on the front end of it. For someone who does use d their devices, um, which I do have a, a 106, I've had a, a G90, I've had a, an X6100, I've had an X5105. Um, you know, the integration with this would be great, but I think where this is going to fall into a, a better aspect is radios outside of their infrastructure, or outside of their, their bubble. Um, this could be great for a Hermes Light 2, um, your SDR radios. Um, depending on what the trigger wattage is, uh, that's not really covered in the information here. It does say that they're, they're compatible with QRP radios, so that's going to tell me 5 watts and under is going to trigger this, but it doesn't say how low it will go. So that is a bit of a bit of a bummer that they haven't haven't specified that. I'm sure we'll be hearing more as it gets closer to release, but it is something that I wish they would have uh, would have specified that in the documentation initially. So anyway, um, radioaddity.com has it available. Uh, your usual sources online have also got either pre-order or there is one site out of the out of Europe. That claims to have them in stock, but the the price is just astronomical, and I think it's an overinflated, overinflated, overinflated price. So we'll go ahead and um, call it there. You guys can take a look at it. Uh, we'll go ahead and just do a quick walk around. There's another shot of the front. Back end has got your antenna port, uh, your radio port. It is using power poles. It does look like it has a few extra connectors on the back. You have your ground, your ground lug. Uh, you've got two accessory ports, your ALC port. Uh, looks like there is a key port, which it doesn't really say anything additional about that. And then this port right here, which it, there's no, no extra views to be able to see what it says. 
There it is compared to a G90, which it's slightly larger than the G90 is, obviously. And we're back around to the, the regular views. So anyway, we'll go ahead and call it there. And I want to appreciate, I just appreciate all you guys for watching. Um, if you guys found something entertaining or informational, I'll go ahead and hit subscribe and come along for the journey. And I'm hoping to get more videos out. It's been a, an interesting summer with a lot going on. So I do apologize for not getting more content out. But uh, we'll be working on that in the near future. For now, we'll say seven threes. Thanks for watching.